society is encouraging us to shoot and to kill. So why should we be astonished that at the end that people killed each other in 1994? And that's just one very small cultural aspect. And I checked the books now being taught in Rwanda. They are not different from the books I learned from. The same poems are being taught in the name of cultural preservation and protection. The psychological part is the amnesia part, which has two dimensions. Self-imposed, I tell myself that I should forget that one. And the state-engineered amnesia, which tells people through radio that the RPF does just great things. Whoever was killed, that was a great thing. Uh, whoever cannot, that's another great thing, which pushes to self-engineering. And that has a psychological effect. And that tells, or that comes to the conclusion that Mahmoud Mamdani came to, that Rwanda is a kind of simmering volcano. But there's something going on that push down. And nobody is doing anything to liberate that volcano. Because uh, you can disagree with me on that, but I think that's a very strong cycle. The very last one to end with five pillars if I were president. This is pure speculation. <laughs> pure speculation. But I do dare dream. Yeah. Right? If I were president, I would take like two years of dictatorship, revise the constitution, and put in it one article that says that no president will go will make more than two one term. One or two one. I would make another article that says that if one term the president is a hood, the next term necessarily the president should be a tutti. And everybody, the Hutus, the Tuas, everybody should vote among that group. <coughs> and the year after, the Hutus should have be able to bring the president. And the entire nation should vote well, that's speculation. And so I don't I don't want to be caught in that. Second part, second pillar. Please, last one. Last one. Second one. I said uh, our our country, our country is sick. The question would be what medication would you suggest? Hmm. There are like two of them. One, I would introduce these missing crucial concepts of criticism. Mm -hmm. Accept me to tell you that what you did was wrong and you should accept it, not turn me into a criminal. Mm -hmm. Accept that I can contradict you without being your enemy. Mm -hmm. And that's at the family level. Can your child, of course, here perhaps it's possible, but can a child contradict the father in Rwanda? No, I'm your father, your son. And that's all. Why? Because uh -huh. so that's a kind of anti-democratic principle that I should root out. Second solution, we should explore the conciliation path rather than the reconciliation path. Because the reconciliation path means we have to return somewhere. And that somewhere doesn't exist. We should learn to forget. And the first thing we should forget is victory. Nobody won in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. I, I, I listen to the Amanyama Tree songs, and they, think, they sing nothing else but the victory of Hutus over Tutsis. And when I listen to the RPF songs after victory, it's in scenes where no one, it's a victory over somebody else. That kind of victory is really destructive to Rwanda. And I think we should forget victory. Remove 1st October from our calendar. Remove. <laughs> Uh, what are the dates? 28th uh, January from our calendar because those are memory stories. That would be all two pillars, but yeah, you can divide them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I yeah, somebody wants to say something over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I also want to say one thing. I want to say I don't think a volcano's analogy is very helpful at all. I know that there's a volcano in Rwanda, and I know it performs an important role in the old religion, but I do not think it's helpful to talk about a country as a volcano. Neither do I think it's helpful to talk about a whole country as sick. I'm very un against this, unless it's the US of A. <laughs> and then I'm very for it. <laughs> okay, what we're trying to say is we've got another 10 to 15 minutes and then the debate is over. So, he was first, then you are. Okay? Yeah. And there, behind, yeah, there's also yeah. yeah, someone. Will you say your name, please? Yes, my name is Akos. Also, Kunzula, I come from Rwanda. And in Beska, I live in Eskede. But uh, I'm happy to be here in uh, Den Haag because you I was uh, yes, in the Hague because I saw this thing on the internet. And I was uh, lucky to be here to see what's really uh, these people are going to discuss with my country. 
Uh, but first of all, it's uh, really, uh, I was curious to see uh, what's going to happen here. And I have seen myself what is around here, but it's unfortunate to discuss the future of my country within the Netherlands here. Because I think this discussion would be more helpful, even more useful when it is in my country. So I don't think there is anybody here who is, uh, uh, it is it's really very sad to hear such one is who still have who uh, oh, are just misleading, misleading people. This is, they give misleading information, which is really not really the real fact that's on the ground. I'm not a politician, I'm not a civil engineer by background. But this is unfortunate to hear people talking like this. So I would give you some facts. So Rwanda, to the moment, you people, I think as a lecturer, actually it is very important that lecturers you are trying also to to give uh, ideas which are not really realistic on the ground. Rwanda is moving forward. Move beyond the, whether you are Hutu, whether you are Tusi, whether you are Fuah, that doesn't matter. So the Netherlands have reached here because they don't have this segregation of things. You should be thinking, take your children to Rwanda. By the way, how long have you been to Rwanda? Sorry? When did you go to Rwanda? When did I go to Rwanda? Yes, when? Does it really... Yes, I want, to give, I want to give you some. Yeah. Does it prevent me from thinking? No, about my country? no. You think about your <laughs> I think I should expect a question from you rather than a criticism that should go to one. No, no, no. I, I want, want to, I want to ask you one question. When have you been to one since when? I think that's the part of the sickness I'm describing. <laughs> <laughs> You think Rwanda is much more in your country than mine because I haven't been there for no, Ask your question. Challenge my yes, ideas. Challenge my ideas. Rwanda, that's, that's, that's not a question about what I presented. Ask me, challenge me on what I said, not okay. where I've been. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. No. Right. 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 I think that's part of the secret I'm describing. Okay. 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 No, we, have to, no, we really have to, to right. finish the thing. So yeah. I want to give some other people yeah. so oh. the last question. So that's the question. Oh. Thank you very much. Yeah. My name is Ambrose. I live here in The Hague. I'm very happy today to, to see Mr. Sesawajina face to face because I, I have been all along behind him, but he never allowed me to, to have a fair discussion. <laughs> and I'm, ask, I'm now going to comment the point he made about training witnesses. Because all the time I have been willing to talk to him, I was not trained. Mm -hmm. I was just a, a genocide survivor who wanted to address him and tell him that I don't find myself in his own story. Because wherever he goes, he talks about saving duties, saving people. The people he saved, he, he presumably saved, was in one place called Hotel Mil Corin. I wasn't there. And I leave that one for him and the people who were there. But if I survived, if my family survived, it is because they were their own heroes or they were saved because they were other heroes. So the award is getting all over. He should take them to those people who saved, because the people he, he says he saved, it's 1,200, I think. I, yeah, I, I, I wonder whether he knows how many survivors you have in Rwanda, and what is the percentage of the people he, he think he saved. <laughs> For me, one second, let, let me finish, let me finish. So, uh, there's a kind of, par there's a kind of paranoia, there's a kind of paranoia which he calls training witnesses. People want to tell him the truth, he doesn't want to face it, and he calls it training. I just loved one thing, I call. I have been trying to challenge Mr. Sesabagina and I, I was not a trend. Thank you. Yeah, now you're a trend. You don't know me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was someone, okay. There was someone up there. You. Yeah, thank you. Um, Say your name, please. Eric. Um, I'm Joe. Um, I thank you. This is very, I, I don't know where we are living in the first place. Looking at the elders, what, what I would call the elders, totally trying to dodge the reality. I'm not pointing at anybody, but you know yourselves. You are an elder who would actually be guiding. You're trying to divert. So many diversions have been made. Genocide has not been called what has, genocide, genocide has not been genocide, it is just 
being named some other thing is Rwandan genocide? Was it other people coming, invading Rwanda, intending to suppress Rwandans? I mean, have Rwandans off? I want, nobody did mention about the Ten Commandments. If there was no genocide, is it the Ten Commandments? A number of commandments. Against who? By who? I'm called in it, though I'm a diplomat here in the Netherlands, but I'm speaking as Mbaba's in it, a Rwandan who is concerned. I'm not speaking on behalf of anyone, I'm speaking on my behalf as a Rwandan. First of all, it's, it's good some people, if you speak as a professional, as we would even get professional words from me. To be sincere, I'm really concerned, as Helen said, to say that a country is sick. A country, we are Rwandans here, we are talking about elements that are concerning Rwandans, which I don't even believe personally, determining the future here in The Hague, determining the future of Rwandans, mil millions of people in Rwandans, to determine their future here in The Hague. I find it sick itself. Leave upon alone calling people that we are sick. Then saying that we, the Rwandan as a country, and it's saying all oh, the Rwandans, in, uh, the Rwandans living in Rwanda, that it's a volcano. You di you call yourself a Rwandan, and you speak like that, and you mislead people who have never been to Rwanda. The Dutch who are here, I wonder what message they get from here. I read your your, your article that you pass on the message. I don't know whether you pass on the message that people in Rwanda are sick and the the, the country is a volcano to your ministers, it's really sick itself. The situation is sick itself. I consider this sick itself. Besides that, besides that, there is why I say that you only talking about only 100 days, if you talk about genocide, you are only talking about the 100 days. You're not talking about uh, more than 30 years. When one group was planning and planning, even involving international community, involving other countries, involving many countries here in Europe, supplying all the, the, the pangas and all that, you only not considering the 30 days when was planning, trying, trying all along to terminate one group. But you consider genocide when it's that uh, period of harm. Are I'm addressing to Mr. Rusesa okay. By the way, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm addressing, in fact, the whole audience. To the whole audience. Okay. Why don't you... I, I, think, I, I think you've made your point. I can pull 20 seconds to answer that. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you for telling us that you are a diplomat. You are a good diplomat. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you. And then you're the last one. No, I rise also. Thank you, thank you very much, madam. My name is Norimana Miheto. Uh, I would like to say hello to Mr. Sesabina before I make my comment. Because by remembering the time I spent with you during the genocide. Hello, Mr. Sesabina. Hello, Mr. Okay. Yeah, I, I have a comment to the kind of attention of the public and the, particularly to my fellow officers. I am speaking as a former coordinator of a crisis committee of refugees where in Hotel Rwanda during the genocide. What I'm saying, my friend of Cesar did not know enough about it. I think I'm enough <coughs> because of I am remembering the time we spent together. If it was not that uh, reason, I will, I will be so hard. But for that, I'd be a bit kind. <coughs> the attention to the whole public, I want to share with you a revealing and disturbing fact of the recent Sawajina messages. Can you do that in about one minute? All right. Okay. Today, the message of Recent Sawajina as politician is the opposite of the message of Recent Sawajina as a hero of the film Hotel Rwanda. It's disturbing. I would like Recent Sawajina to comment a bit about that. Indeed, 
At one side, the politician who says a vagina, don't mind, I, I'm not going to. The, polit the politician who says a vagina deny the planning of genocide by, by paper, paper tratas of the genocide against the Tutsi of one. He defend them in court. He fight for the, the impunity and the rehabilitation. Paradoxically, he shamelessly accused the RPF who defeated those criminals in 94 and whom he wrongly considered as a Tutsi movement of the crime of the planning. Yes, let's finish. It's five. Yes, quite personal story. Yes. Yeah. He accused but the RPF <laughs> of the crime of having planned the genocide against Tutsi. Is, is it possible to send this letter? I do that. I do that. And uh, because of I know, yeah. so I know already my no, comment. I think this is uh, this is too personal. We try to uh, to have a lot of voices in in this room, and we uh, we come to an end. And I hear yes, And then you can you can give this letter to me, and I will ask Mr. Paul. Uh, if he wants to, to, to get it from you. Thank you, thank you very much. But I would like him to comment his contradiction as politician. Yeah, yeah, that as what they Thank you so much. Yeah. My pleasure. Well, 20 seconds. Well, since I am involved, I think I will ask a little bit slightly more than 20 seconds. But I will be, yeah, I will be, I will be sure. Thank you, Mr. Nurimana, because you said that this time you are going to be kind. You have been kind enough. Secondly, I'm sorry because you are bringing in a personal story. And this personal story is so kind and nice to me because you also agreed that in 1994 we were together in that place where no one was beaten, no one was killed, no one was taken up. At this, I conclude my answer. Thank you for your kindness, for bringing me back to this period of time. And keep it up. Thank you, Paul. Love God's question. Thank you very much, moderator. Um, uh, uh, actually, the, uh, the answer, seconds, huh? yes, uh, the answer of Mr. Mr. Sabagina um, falls into what I want to say because some, somebody mentioned uh, bringing a personal story in, 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 a, uh, in a conference where a country is being discussed. And uh, I find it a little bit uh, disrespectful and a little bit un unprofessional just to uh, connect personal stories to a bigger group that uh, the country because you and I came to this conference that there was a big title, so an embarrassing title to say that Rwanda, is there any future uh, without proper damage? And now uh, we, uh, I just sat here for about two hours uh, uh, where I heard only personal stories, uh, starting by uh, Mr. Bagina's story about Natos and trend witness and uh, apply, and he applied his whole personal story to the entire country, and I find it really good. Uh, uh, it's a pity, it's a waste of time, I think. Uh, okay. You're happy just to bring a country to that level of Sorry? You're happy that it was at least a free entrance? Uh, uh, absolutely, <laughs> yes. I'm happy that I didn't have to pay for this. Can I take the last one? I'd actually like to respond to the lady in red who spoke uh, a few minutes ago. Um, in red. Yes, yes, the lady in red. Uh, she said that it's sick to talk about uh, Rwanda being a sick country. Uh, I was born in Rwanda, but I had to come to the Netherlands and not by choice. It was because of the uh, circumstances that the genocide brought about. It is those circumstances that keep, uh, keep me here in the Netherlands. I am afraid, honestly, to be in Rwanda. And just think if oh, no, no. allow her, allow her to speak. But uh, not giving any recognition uh, um, to my fear is actually um, unfair from you because you have not went through what I went through, and I must say I have not went through half the things other people I know went through. There are people who saw the most horrible things, and they are still traumatized. They are afraid of going back because the moment they will, they are, they they risk to be murdered. They risk to be disappearing. This is not a reality for everyone in Rwanda, but this is a reality for some, and that needs to be recognized. And a government, uh, 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 sorry, speaking of Rwanda is sick, is 
just mentioning that part, that there is so much enmity that even here in the Netherlands, if I am around other random people, I am not feeling completely comfortable because there is a lot of enmity between random people everywhere. Why so, do that? Because of our and history. Why should you, by the way, when you feel guilty, sometimes when you feel It's not guilty. guilt. Yeah. 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 Fear. Yeah. Fear. Fear. Why should you feel guilty? The problem is that I'm less than six years old. What I'm saying here, what I'm saying here, you took... Let me answer. I was six years old when I came to the Netherlands. So I cannot have any guilt. I don't know if you have ever seen a child of sins consciously killing anyone, but I have still there are children who have been prosecuted in Rwanda, same age as I was then, who for, for murdering, for, for doing all illegal things which they are innocent from. This is the fear that holds us uh, from not going to Rwanda. And I am very grateful that we have here a, a group of people who are maybe not random, but who do share the same passion for our country as we do, and are trying to look with us for looking uh, for solutions. I'm grateful that this is here. It's not in my country. I wish I could go in my country and do this, but this is not possible. So when I get an opportunity here, I think it's very strange that you cannot appreciate the same thing that I can appreciate, because you're here in this country as well. You're not in your country right now. I'm assuming you're around there. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Laisa told just what I want to say. Anywhere when it's Rwandan. 20 seconds also, John. Yes. Really I want to go in, in a speech. <laughs> I think it's uh, right to discuss wherever we are. We cannot just say we will discuss about Rwanda in Rwanda and we are not finding the solution with Netherlands to Rwanda problems. Rwandans have to discuss wherever they are. They have the right to discuss about their country. They have the right to discuss about their future. Thank you. May, may, I, may, I, may, I, may I thank uh, Anneke for this uh, organizing of this uh, meeting. And I have a question for you. Uh, I give you all the four now, because I think it's very nice to know if you are willing to have an, uh, another yes. meet, just raise your hands if you are happy to do this Again. another time. Thank you. 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 Thank there are some people against uh, having such a meeting okay. again. Oh, no, no, no we, we, we're finishing. I just wanted to congratulate you for this, because this is the first time you just made it open. The way I said I was, I have been behind you, it's because it was crossed. Today it was open. I'm very happy. Congratulations. Okay. But very much like to thank all our speakers because they had the courage to come here, they had the courage to speak open and we have an open discussion. I would like to thank you all in being here and uh, in having an open discussion and I really hope we can have another debate on Rwanda being patronizing or not.